For a while now, I've been admiring aircraft blueprint art, but I couldn't really see myself paying upwards of 80 to $90 for something like this. So I figured I'd see if I could make my own. In this video, I'm going to show you how I did it. I got some canvases at a hobby store, and I started by covering them with two coats of white spray paint each. There's nothing overly special to this step, just two coats evenly sprayed. For the top coat, I did two coats on the blue because one wasn't going to be thick enough. I started by doing the edges, and then the tops. Spray painting anything, canvases included, I try to resist doing one super thick layer and instead have several thinner layers that are more even. The black rust-oleum spray paint gave me a more even coverage than the blue Krylon did, so I was able to do these with just a single top coat. At the same time I sprayed my canvases, I also sprayed several of these little 4-inch canvas squares to be used as test pieces to get my settings figured out. I painted these following the exact same process as the larger canvases so they'd be the most accurate test subjects. So while the paint dried, I got my images ready for engraving. I started by importing an image into Lightburn. I'm going to show how to do a simple trace, and I'm going to trace this C-130 yoke cap. Alright, so something to get out of the way. All the images I'm using in this video are images that I was able to download for free on the internet, but these canvases that I'm making are just going to be art for my own personal office. None of this stuff is being sold. So anyway, right now I have an image file, and what I want to do is turn it into a vector file. A simple way to understand that is, instead of having millions of dots that the laser would have to fire in individually, this will get turned into simple lines. Aside from making this come out a lot better on a canvas, it will go a lot quicker too. When I go to preview right here, if you look, you can see how long this is estimated to take. A ten and a half hour engraving is a hard pass for me, so let's make this go quicker. With the image selected, I'm going to right click and then go down to trace. So use the trace to basically make outlines of all the different parts of the image. How well this works is based on pretty much how good of an image you have to start with and what you set the cutoff and thresholds at. Here you can see as I move them around, it changes how sensitive the lines are that surround all the different fields within the image. Now for something pretty basic like this yelp cap, I just move them around until I get an outline that looks like it'll probably work out pretty well. Once you get those magenta lines to something that you think you'll be happy with, you go ahead and click OK. Now, I got a lot of outlines on this of things I don't want, so to get rid of them, I'm going to right-click on the image after I select it, and I'm going to go to Ungroup. This will allow me to select every little individual part on its own, so I can go through, highlight, select, and delete all the stuff I don't want. On stuff like the text, it pretty much traced it as sort of an outline font, and I can go in and remove those inner lines so I can have a solid letter when it does engrave. Now, it may look pretty rough right now, but you have to remember, this is severely enlarged. When I actually engrave this image, it's going to be significantly shrunk down from what you're seeing here. Now, one thing you can do when you have an image like this is combine multiple traces to get it the way you want. So, for instance, this little winged piece right here came out really pretty poorly. If I had adjusted the threshold and everything to make it come out really well, other things wouldn't have come out well, like the text. So, instead of trying to make it all good in one go, I'm going to do a composite. So I'm pretty much just going to repeat the exact same steps I did earlier, except this time I'm going to focus on just that one area that traced poorly and see if I can get a trace that comes out good. So I move around the cutoff and threshold until I found a setting where that little winged part came out in a way that I found acceptable. So then I clicked OK for trace and I removed everything that I didn't want except that little winged part. Once I had all the noise removed, I put my first trace back over it and lined everything up. This area still had a little bit extra cleanup to do from the first trace, but it went quickly enough. If this seems tedious, it's really not. The entire process of tracing this image twice and cleaning it all up took less than five minutes. So with all that done, I resized the image and got ready to engrave it on one of my canvas test squares. But before that, I needed to do a materials test. So I've never really tried engraving canvas before this project, so I'll run the materials test to find out what my best setting will be so I don't burn through all the paint down to the canvas and then scorch the canvas, or worse yet, burn all the way through the canvas down to the honeycomb cutting bed. 
So all my canvases have a minimum of three layers of paint on it, and I only want to burn through the top coat and into the second layer of white paint. So I'm going to set these for pretty low settings with fairly high speeds and see what it looks like on one of my little test squares. The laser I'm using for this project is a Creality Falcon 2 22 watt, which is more than enough power to engrave a canvas. So I let the machine run, and when I pulled the test card out, it did not look amazing. So when you're engraving paint on canvas, you always have to clean it off, and you just use some water, spray it on a paper towel, and wipe it down pretty good. With the test square clean, I had a pretty good idea what my settings should be. So aside from making sure that the image wasn't too big to fit on a little test square, I had the right power and speed settings. So I entered that in up here in the speed and power settings in the cut layers window. I also set the mode to fill so all the letters and numbers would be filled rather than just outlined. As a tip when doing canvases, I would recommend turning a framing laser to off. Even a 3% beam on this machine was enough to score the paint. Anyway, once the machine was done, I cleaned off the engraving and it looked good, but I think I need to increase the power slightly. So the trace function in Lightburn is pretty good, but it has its limitations. Here's what it would look like when you try to trace a much more complex image. If I really zoom in, you can see there's a lot of light noise between all the lines. All those light dots and shadows are going to make it very difficult for Lightburn to trace. With as much as is going on in this picture, it would be really hard to do it as composites like I did the earlier, much more simple yoke cap. So we're going to turn to a different and I'll add free program called Inkscape. Just Google Inkscape and you'll find the website where you can download it. After opening the program, I'm going to change the canvas to something a little more suitable to what I'm doing by going File, Document Properties, and here I can change it to Landscape and I can go from an A4 to a different shaped piece of paper if I want. Next, to get my image, I'm going to go File, Import, and I'm going to find the C130 diagram where I have it saved. Now my imported picture is huge, so I'm going to select it. I'm going to lock the aspect ratio and I'm going to decrease the size until it's a little more appropriate for my screen. Now to trace the image, I'm going to select it, go up to path, and then select trace bitmap. Now Inkscape has several different trace modes and I'm going to try out brightness cutoff. After a few seconds, the trace is complete and you can tell by the image getting darker. If you select it and then drag, you'll see that it's now a double image. I deleted the PNG file that we just traced so I could get a better idea of what I was looking at, and I wasn't entirely happy with how much definition I had on the first trace. I deleted that and re-imported my image to try again. For the second try, I decided to use edge detection mode and increased my threshold to see if I could get a little more definition in the trace. This particular trace came out way too heavy, and I don't think it would have come out real well engraved on canvas. I played around with edge detection a little bit more before I switched back to brightness cutoff and started tweaking the threshold to see if I could get a better image. It seems like this mode worked a lot better for this particular image because I was pretty happy with what I got. The engraving is the image on the left here and you can see that the text is very legible. All the other elements have a good amount of definition as well. Since I was happy with the trace, I deleted the original PNG image and then saved my new trace as an SVG file, which is a vector file. Now, back in Lightburn, I imported that SVG file that I just created in Inkscape. Now you can see this time, instead of an image, I have a line drawing. Not only will this engrave a lot faster, it'll also come out a lot clearer because the laser won't be attempting to do any shading. Instead of pixels like the original image, it is now essentially just lines. Next, I drew a rectangle around the entire image that's just slightly larger than the canvas I'm going to be engraving. This is to help with alignment of the canvas to the machine, which you'll see later on. Next, I want to add the yoke cap image that we made earlier, so I'm going to import that light burn file as well. I played around with my alignment a little bit, and then I ran a preview to see what this would look like. It came through inverted, so I turned that off and then zoomed in to get an idea. Now, like I mentioned earlier, I don't want the text to come through as an outline drawing, so I needed to do some grouping and create a few layers. I selected all the text elements, and you can use standard Windows keyboard shortcuts for this, like holding control so you can continue to select more items. 
I grouped all the text elements under layer two and then set that to fill. And when I zoomed in on my preview, I could see that it was now gonna be solid text. I did the same for some of the elements of the Yoke Cap logo. When I was happy with the way everything looked and was laid out, I turned off the output on both the wire diagram and all the text in the yoke cap and got ready to frame up my laser. I clicked frame and then adjusted the piece of sacrificial wood that I put on the laser cutting bed. When that looked okay, I held the plywood down with some magnets. Next, I engraved just the blue line. Beam focus on this really doesn't matter. As long as the laser's high enough to clear the magnets, it's okay. Once that was done, I increased the Z-height axis on the laser, rehomed it, and then ran the frame again to get everything properly oriented. Next, I aligned my prepared canvas inside that rectangle I engraved a few seconds ago. Here you can see how all I have to do is get the canvas lined up right inside that box that I engraved, and I know that my image will be in the right spot on the canvas. Then the last thing that I did was set the laser height for engraving according to Creality's little Z-axis stop block. I closed the lid on my enclosure and then I went back to Lightburn where I turned off my outline and I turned on both my engraving layers. I clicked start and for an engraving as complex as this one, it took my 11 year old laptop a little while to get going. Once the laser started, it took about an hour to complete the engraving. Once complete, I took out the canvas and like all my test pieces, I had to clean it off with a little bit of water. Overall, I was really happy with how this one came out. I got good detail on the engraving. It only cost a couple bucks to make and it'll look nice in my future office. Once I had the process down, I made a few other engravings for all the other aircraft I worked over in my time as a crew chief. Anyway, that is the basic process for laser canvas engraving. And if you made it this far, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.